One day I made a decision that enough is enough. I'm tired of being average. I'm tired. I'm tired of being good. I'm tired. I want to go to the dealership and buy the best car. I want to move to the nicest neighborhood. I want to fly first class. I want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Australia. I, want, I made a decision. Enough is enough. It's showtime. Will the real Eric Thomas please stand up? Some of you in the room right now, you are where you are. You're giving 60% when you have 120 in you. Why? Because you never made a decision. Shh, there are those of you in this room. You already there. Your problem is this some stuff you don't want to give up to go on. You're talented. You just don't want to give up sleep. Listen to me, pound for pound, any agent in the room, pound for pound, motivational speaker, pound for pound, entrepreneur, pound for pound, athlete, pound for pound, weightlifter, pound for pound, whatever you do, I guarantee you when you do it, nobody can do it like you do it. The problem is you don't hardly do it. You love sleep too much. You love that alcohol too much. You love that substance too much. You love that vice too much. There's something that you love more than yourself than your dream, than your goals. Watch what happens when you have a goal that only has two reasons. See how long that lasts. Watch a goal that has 50 reasons and see how you... There's some, somebody called me the other day on an interview, stupid question. E.T., what do you feel like on the days that you don't feel like? I said, ask, ask the question again, please. Well, what do you do on the days that you don't feel like I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm way past that. Every day I feel like. Every day I feel like eating. Every day I feel like giving my wife the best life. Every day I feel like driving in a nice car. Every day I feel like flying first class. Every, every single day of my life, I feel like giving a hundred to the, every single day. Somebody said yesterday, ET, you gave 120. What you gonna do tomorrow? I said, I don't know, get 140. I don't know, but I don't have days where I don't feel like it. Why? Because I'm counting on me. My wife's counting on me. I don't have days to waste. No more 50%, no more. No more 70%, no more. I want us an 85 to climb. I want you at 85 and climbing. If you're at 80, I want you at 90, and I mean moving rapidly. It's not rocket science. And the universe is not responding to you correctly because your body language sucks. Your spirit sucks. It's defeated. I need you to give me that 120. I need you to give me that everything you do. I need you to start giving me that 120 in everything you do. Bring it all, all together. Bring all the energy, all the passion. Bring it all together and dominate. I got an opportunity to make a dream become a reality. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more plan. If you don't have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is studying. Get off the phone. Sorry, I'm not available until the end of this year. No, I'm for real. You reached the right number, but you called me at the wrong time. Call me back January 1st. I'm about to get busy now. Stop being this high school dropout. Stop giving up. Stop sleeping on the streets. Stop walking up and down Finkel Avenue like you ain't got nothing and get your GED. Stop being afraid to take a test. I got to commit my very being to this thing. I got I to gotta breathe it. I got to eat it. I got to sleep it. And until you get there, you'll never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you, the world is yours. So work hard and you can have whatever it is you want. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about hearts. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You got to have hearts. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. There are a lot of people that are sitting around waiting for something to happen. Now, what you going to do about it? We're getting out of college and we haven't the faintest idea what we want to do. So I always ask the question, what would you like to do if money were no object? What, how would you really enjoy spending your life? 
Well, it's so amazing as a result of our kind of educational system, crowds of students say, well, we'd like to be painters, we'd like to be poets, we'd like to be writers, but as everybody knows, you can't earn any money that way. Or another person says, well, I'd like to live an out-of-doors life and ride horses. I say, do you want to teach in a riding school? But let's go through with it. What do you want to do? When we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do, I will say to him, you do that and uh, forget the money. Uh, because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living, that is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. And after all, if you do really like what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it is, you can eventually turn it, uh, you could eventually become a master of it. It's the only way to become a master of something, to be really with it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. So uh, don't, don't worry too much, uh, that's, uh, everybody's, uh, somebody's interested in everything. And anything you can be interested in, you'll find others who are. But it's absolutely stupid to spend your time doing things you don't like in order to go on spending things you don't like, doing things you don't like. Wake up from your dream and make your dream a reality. Wake up. Wake up and understand the significance of the purpose that you have within yourself. Understand that if there's something that you are truly ultimately seeking in your life, then you got to go after it. There are a lot of people that are sitting around waiting for something to happen. Now what you going to do about it? How are you going to go about doing the things that are necessary to get you where you need to be in your life? Everybody has a dream. But how much are you applying to that dream? How far are you pushing that dream? When are you going to realize that the dream is not going to work by itself? You got to have the ability to rise up and push yourself and believe in yourself and make that dream a reality. What's your why? I, if, hey, if I don't give y'all nothing else, you better start that. What's your why? You know why I do what I do and I do it so passionately? Because my grandfather was a high school dropout. My father was a high school dropout. I was a high school dropout and we about to break the cycle. I do what I do so my son won't have to go through what I went through. When I was at the football game, my old dude wasn't with me. I saw other kids with they fought. I said, that'll never happen to me. I do what I do because my daughter says she's going to Harvard. It ain't even about y'all. I'm about to come in here and blaze y'all. Why? Because I'm trying to get you all the NFL. I ain't about to miss this opportunity. This is the first NFL team I've ever done in my life, and I'm about to lick it. I'm about to give everything I got, and I will know if I don't get another gig, it won't have anything to do with the fact that I didn't put everything on the field. What's your why? Why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you put on that jersey? Why do you go out and practice? Why? I got to commit my very being to this thing. I got to I got to breathe it. I got to eat it. I got to sleep it. And until you get there, you'll never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you the world is yours. So work hard and you can have whatever it is you want. You should be a monster. Because everyone says, well, you should be harmless. You don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat. No. You should be a monster. And then you should learn how to control it. The definition of being aggressive is forceful and sometimes overly assertive pursuit of one's aims. In combat, almost nothing will happen the way you want it to if you don't force it that way. The enemy, nature, time, there's all kinds of things that, that are going against you. It's a losing battle. And if you don't use force of will, then, then you're not gonna get it done. What it means is, is you need to make things happen. This is the good thing about being aggressive. Sure, there's, there's certain parts of your nature that are aggressive, but it can also be trained. 
you can start to think with an aggressive mindset which is I am going to take action I'm gonna overcome obstacles I'm gonna push through roadblocks I'm not gonna take no for an answer and th- those are things that you can train there's so often times where people they get told no or they hit an obstacle and it's game over for them. they're just done they're done training they're over it and your attitude you have to go okay little little roadblock cool how am I gonna get through it? how am I getting around it what I need you to do is evaluate yourself today evaluate yourself to see where you are in this race of life many of you don't even realize that you've been racing to the finish line this life is a race some of you need to be pushed to start running because you've been walking or you haven't been moving for so long and you don't even know that you're in a race that all of us are competing to win but it doesn't matter where you finish it matters that you run after your goals and your dreams the way to live is to run after your dreams to run after your goals and to run after that finish line there may be things in your life right now that's holding you back from running but you have to break through those things they're there to hinder you but you can't let it force you to stop running chase your dreams chase your goals I don't know the situation you're in right now but the situation that you're in is not your future it's not who you really are it's not your full potential the sky's the limit but it all starts from within it's all up to you you should be a monster you have to be hungry for greatness You got to go through it to get to it. You got to understand that there are going to be many circumstances that will require your full undivided attention. You got to go through it to get to it. You have to understand it has to be a unique mindset setting a goal and then going beyond it realizing that there's work to be done making sure that all of the strings are attached and make no mistake along the way now it's true that we all make mistakes and we will have many setbacks but there's always room for a comeback to understand this you must realize that you must humble yourself but yet be hungry enough to go after it with everything inside of you everything that is required depends on you having the mindset that regardless of anything that is around you, that is surrounding you, that is trying to drag you down. You must have the mindset. You must be strong. You must be resilient. You must be driven. And you must be able to take whatever's coming at you. If you stumble, if you fall, have the ability to get up. But you can't depend on just your body to do the work. You must understand that it's the mental fortitude that will get you through it all. So many people don't have this fortitude. They don't have this attitude. They have no faith in themselves. If you, you as the individual, can take the first step then perhaps many more will follow there's always going to be ups and downs in life man there's always going to be bumps in the road things that ain't going to go as planned unexpected stuff's going to happen you're going to face some pain 
you're going to face some tough times. And if you ain't trained your mind to be prepared for it and how to handle it, it's going to break you. The secret is to work on your mindset daily. Work on the way that you see the world. Otherwise, you'll live your whole life seeing the world through someone else's eyes. You'll be a creature of circumstance. You'll be a victim of your life and not the master of it. Read books, listen to audios like this one. Start learning about why you do the things that you shouldn't do and why you don't do the things that you should. It's all because of the way that thing between your ears is white. But know this, you're in control of rewiring it whenever you make the decision to do so. At any moment, you can take control back of your life and start creating a life that you deserve, not a life that someone else has paved out for you. And when all of the struggle comes, all of the bad times, all of the dark times come around, which they inevitably will, you'll be strong enough to take it head on and it will make you rather than break you. You have greatness inside you, let me tell you. Unlimited potential, but you have to train your mind. Every single day, things are gonna happen outside of your control. The weather, terrorism, coronavirus. But you can't control any of that shit. All you can control is how you choose to look at situations. You can control the information that you're letting in here. Never forget that you can have anything in this life that you want if you're willing to go and get it. You've got to have belief. You've got to have belief and that belief comes from working on your mindset every single day. Remember this. You can be a victim of your life or the master of it. We had to experience great losses in 2019. We had to witness great victories in 2019. This is the beauty of living. This is the beauty of understanding. This is the beauty of knowing that you matter and the reason that you matter is because you are still here among the living. Now you have to set the new stage. Now you have to set the new mark and be greater than you was yesterday. Realize that you are walking above ground for a reason. 2019 may have had its ups and downs, but you did not stay down. You knew what you had to do to get up, so you got up. Maybe that job didn't come through for you in 2019, but 2020 is waiting for you. And if you're able to live, and if you're able to push, if you're able to grow, you're gonna grow into a better you. Let this be the opportunity of a lifetime. Don't forget, easy was not intended for you or I. For without struggle, how can you build true character? So maybe you were in a position that you felt like you were broken. But being broken doesn't mean that you can't put it all together again. You must be the architect of your life. Create your own blueprint. Set yourself up and regardless if you fail or if you succeed, but don't give up. Because if you made it this far, you can definitely go a little bit further. Make 2020 your year. Make 2020 be the year that they remember you that you remember your accomplishments as well as your failures. But don't you ever, ever give up on you. This year is coming to an end. And 2020 is right around the corner. Make sure that you are ready. Make sure that you are prepared because 2020 has not been written yet. Just like a book, there are many chapters in a book. What chapter will tell the story about you? 
What history will you make? What would you leave behind? What legacy would you leave behind? 2020 is the year that we begin a new chapter, a new day, a new year, a new you. Now I'm not talking about just the physicality. I'm talking about the mental, the physical, as well as the spiritual. For they are one. They are all connected. But you have to be connected with your self-resilience. You have to be connected with your ideas. You have to be connected with your truth. Strength, leadership, power, authority, guidance, patience, are God's gift to us as men. We have to cherish that, not abuse it. I prayed this morning to be a better listener didn't work so well <laughs> it's we're human you get back up yes I've been high up on the mountain I've been blessed but that's a slippery slope yeah and it's lonely up there yeah. you know people don't know that side of it. we did not come this far to just break down and lose now I'm a winner I'm going to win True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you, sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. Aspire to make a difference. So you are what you are in this world. It's either one or two things. Either you're somebody, Nobody. Never give up. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy. If it were easy, there'd be no Denzel Washington. So, keep working, keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So, keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. While it may be frightening, it will also be rewarding. So you gotta get out there, you gotta give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. 
I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Fail big. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life, and it can be, it can be very frightening. It, it's a new world out there, it's a mean world out there, and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about. Take chances, professionally. Don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams. And they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals, life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. Sometimes it's just to not curse somebody out. <laughs> Simple goals, but have goals. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline, and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you've already done, and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and this a few days. You have to work at it. Hard work works. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I don't care how much money you make, you can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it. They got robbed, that's all they got. You can't take it with you. And it's not how much you have, it's what you do with what you have. We all have different talents. Some of you will be doctors, some lawyers, some scientists, some educators, some nurses, some preachers. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling, the good feeling that I get from helping others, nothing's better than that. Well, one or two things, but nothing's better than that. Not, not jewelry, not big house I have, not the cars, but the, the, it's the joy. That's where the joy is in helping others. That's where the success is. And anything you want good, you can have, so claim it, work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back, pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Remember, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Remember that, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. My mother told me, she said, yeah, because you can run in place all the time and never get anywhere. So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to progress. When pressure begins to build called life, because life is going to bring you ups and downs and mountains and valleys. And I'm sure some of you in here, your backstory is full of ups and downs and good days and bad days. I bet some of you in here, your backstory is full of a lot more difficulties and some traumas and some things. It's hard for others to comprehend. And for some of you, it hasn't been the roughest or the most difficult, but yet still at times, you still find this void of you wanting to belong and where do you fit in? Life is about these ups and these downs, and it's about pressure and insecurities and just challenges. The 
challenge for you and me is what will we do with the pressure that we're in? Will we allow the pressure to bust the pipe or will we step into uncomfortable, step into our story and to realize the pressure, the challenge, the difficult situation, if I grab a hold of it and take control of what I can control, which is me and my reaction and how I respond, that pressure can become something valuable like a diamond. The only way you can turn the corner in your life is to own your smack. In other words, everything in your life is your fault. If you don't, you will underperform all your life because of these excuses. And before you know it, you would have justified being average. You would have justified being stuck. I want you to look in the mirror, young kings and queens today. If you're growing up with nothing, if you're growing up with, without, I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to say these words. I want you to say that I am royalty. I am more of my generational curses. You're going to have to be phenomenal in everything you do because everyone in the world is chasing greatness. And what do you do when a man is going 100 miles per hour and you haven't even started the engine yet? The best gifts come from the bottom. I want to give our last name a legacy that will be remembered forever. See, this type of greatness I'm talking about, I'm talking about when I die, they can't even fit another body in the church. Because what I gave the world. The one thing that you must understand is that you don't get any do-overs. Once your day ends, that's it. So what action do you need to commit to taking today? How long are we going to talk about it? How long are we going to dream about it? How long are we going to fantasize about it? How long? You tell me. It takes grit, it takes sacrifice, it takes time and energy, it takes extreme focus. Go get it, go get it, go get it, go get it. I want to be that voice to you to stop dreaming and start chasing, start pursuing, but most importantly, you got to become. Everything I ever dreamed of lives in the sky and I must jump every single day to go reclaim what's mine. So I'm challenging you to take action with the resources that you have right now. You see, many of us believe that just because our father was a drug dealer and our uncle was a drug dealer, that that is our life, that is our forever. But I want you to know something. That is only a lesson to show us to be something more than what they thought we could be. You see, when a family tree is dying, all you have to do is take care of the roots. And if the roots is too dead to bring the tree back alive, you plant another one. Too often you have a dream of creating this or getting involved with there, but at the end of the day, sometimes this fear of will I fail, will I be accepted, will I make it, will I achieve it, the challenge is, is learning to punch that fear, that threshold right in its mouth, and I'm not promoting violence, but I'm talking about the fear of that voice in the back of your head that makes you think that you can't. And you know what, maybe you'll make a mistake, but you're failing forward. The thing that we have to continue to passionately, uncompromisably not give in on is the fact that I'm not staying stagnant. I'm moving forward because what I feed will grow and what I starve will die. We got a lot of lions out there in those neighborhoods, drug dealers, killers, whatever you want to call yourself. And I want you to know, King, you special. You misguided, but you special. I know you grew up without a father and your mother left you and nobody ever loved you and nobody ever told you you can be anything and you believed it. But I want to 
to tell you this, that you are phenomenal, you are a king, you come from royal blood, you stand on the tip top of pyramids, you are royalty, king. You are a light, you are a star. The question is, do you believe? And so for me, what I caught from my dad when I was a kid, it was his coping mechanisms, you know, like I always say, it was the fake face, it was the fake smile, it was acting like everything's good on the surface, but when I was alone and I was looking in the mirror, man, I was struggling, but I was silent. I was screaming, but I was quiet. And that thought pattern, pressure began to bust and break pipes in my life. See, pressure, like I always say, it can create diamonds or it can bust a pipe. I don't care what your salary is, I don't care what your title is, dominate where you are right now so you can get in position to get promoted. Stop justifying, stop making excuses and dominate where you are right now. You gotta set goals that create pressure. Stop wasting your time making excuses and blaming other people. You need to set goals and pursue them, but you gotta set goals and create pressure and get some support until you get there. And the worst thing you can do is let yourself off the hook. And that's what excuses do. You let yourself off the hook when you set a goal, when you have a dream, when you have a vision. Don't you ever let yourself off the hook. This means you gotta work. This means you have to run when they sleep. You gotta grind when they won't. You gotta grind when you do not feel like it. And this in all areas in life, school, sports, your religion, consistency. It's the tunnel to greatness. Consistency will turn a ordinary man into something he never thought he could be. You know, my dad would say, go get it, son, go get it. Be sweet, baby, be sweet, go get it. Go get it, be sweet, baby, go get it. Go get it, be sweet, be sweet, baby. Go get it, go get it, be sweet, be sweet, baby. Every time I left the house, my mom would say, be sweet, baby, be sweet. My dad would say, go get it, son, go get it. Go get it, son, go get it, be sweet, go get it, be sweet, go get it, be sweet, go get it, be sweet. My family had two core values. Go get it, son. Be sweet, baby. Let the world know your name, king and queen. I get it. The pain is unbearable. You keep playing it back in your head over and over and over. You keep trying to see where you went wrong. The situation is on repeat. People are going to talk anyway. So you may as well do what makes you happy. And now some people are going to call you a loser. Some people are going to make fun of you for failing. Some people are going to count you out. Say you will never amount to anything. Call you weak. What you going to do? Are you going to prove them right, or are you going to prove them wrong? Let them think you're weak. Stop going back and forth with people who don't deserve your time or your attention. If you have been announcing your plans, do me a favor. Stop talking and start showing. No need for you to say what you're going to do. Just do it. I learned the hard way that everyone who is around me is not for me because everyone doesn't want the best for me. And so I had to learn to keep things to myself until I have already done the work. Are you going to show them that failure doesn't define who you are? Are you going to show them that failure is a necessary lesson on the path to success? Are you going to show them that you're a beast in this game? 
What you gonna do? You gotta get hungry. You gotta get ready. It's time to get to work and show them all. Show them you're a different animal. Let them talk. When you're on a mission, you don't have time to be fighting meaningless battles. You have to be focused. You have to be intentional. And you can't allow the noise outside to get to you. I get it. You did everything in your power and you still came up short. And you feel like you can't take the pain anymore. You did everything you could and you still failed. You didn't win, but that's okay. It's okay you didn't walk away with the trophy. It's okay that you didn't walk away with your head held high. I get it, it happens. That's life. What do you wanna be remembered for? It's time to get to work. So take a moment and take note of who and what you've been giving your energy to. Everything you do should be on purpose and aligned with your life's goals. It's your mindset that will get you to the top, but your mindset can also keep you in a cycle of starting but never finishing. If you're not careful, you will find yourself talking, planning, and analyzing, but never executing. It's time to get back in the game. Pick your head up. Get up! Let them talk. Let them think you're weak. Let them think you'll never succeed. Their thoughts do not define you. That failure doesn't define you. Your work ethic does. Your drive does. Your tenacity does. Your relentlessness does. Winners are action takers. Winners take a hit and get back up. You don't have to know exactly how you're going to get what you want. You just have to have an inner knowing that you're going to do it, that you're going to make it, that you're going to cross the finish line. So stop talking about who you want to become and become that person now. Do you realize that you can step into your future self right now? You don't have to procrastinate. You don't have to wait until you feel like everything is lining up perfectly. Growth is supposed to be uncomfortable. So stop looking for comfort. Stand up. I know it's scary. I know it's intimidating. I know it's hard. But it's time. It's time to level up. It's time to choose to be great. Time to choose to be better. Let's go, it's time to win. I can recall saying time after time, why is everything so hard for me? From the outside looking in, it looked like everyone else was winning with ease. But I was bruised, I was broken, I was burned out. But I had it all wrong. I made my journey difficult because without even realizing it, I expected my journey to be difficult. In fact, when something came easy for me, I was nervous. I was nervous because I was not accustomed to winning so easily. I was accustomed to struggling. I was accustomed to being stressed out. And I'm not saying that you won't hit some difficult moments, but I am saying, that you shouldn't commit to having a difficult life. You have to condition your mind to expect your situation to get better. And you have to remind yourself that those who are winning are no different from you. Those who win, those who go hard, those who crush their goals have no problem focusing on themselves and what they want 
Many of us have been conditioned to put ourselves last. Many of us have been taught that it's our duty to make everyone around us happy. And what happens is you get so wrapped up in trying to make everyone around you happy and comfortable that you end up losing yourself. You end up losing your vision. You lose your drive. You lose your why. And guess what? That is not fair to you. You deserve to set aside time for yourself. You deserve to be able to say no and not feel guilty about it. You deserve to be selfish sometimes. This is the thing. People will sing your praises until you tell them no. Don't lose yourself trying to be who everyone else wants you to be. Don't lose your focus. Don't stop going hard just because people have something to say about it. If you continue to put yourself on the back burner, you will have to deal with the consequences of that decision. Don't keep saying you want something, but then when it's time to go after it, you've got excuse after excuse. If you want it, you have to go after it with all you've got. Your job is to show up, put in the work, and let your results speak for you. Less talking, more results. You really want me on the team. What's your approach to recruitment? You want first place, come play with me. You want second place, go somewhere else. Like, I, I would watch Magic play. I'd watch Michael play. And I would see them do these unbelievable things, and I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. That's why he's the best player in the game. Everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything. Everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. So because you know what you want, the world's giving you exactly the information you 100%, need to become better at it. Because you know what you're looking for. So many guys tell stories about your work ethic. Yeah. What was really your work ethic like and for how long did you stay disciplined? Um, well, I mean... I mean, every day, I mean, since, you know, 20 years, I mean, it was an everyday process and trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses. For example, jumping ability, man, my vertical was a 40, it wasn't a 46 or a 40, mm -hmm. 45. Um, my hands are big, but they're not massive, right? So you got to figure out ways to strengthen them. So your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast, right? So I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. And, uh, but I enjoyed it though. So like from the time I was, I can remember when I started watching the game, I studied the game mm. and it just never changed. It's a good separation for me, you know, emotionally to be able to put myself in a place where at practice or when I'm training or during games, I switch my mind to something else switch my mode into something else, right? For me, it's the equivalent of Maximus, Desmus, Meridius, and Gladiator picking up the dirt, smelling the dirt, it's go time, right? So that was my mental switch. It was like an actor getting ready for a film. You gotta put yourself in that cage. When you're in that cage, you are that character. And then when you leave there, it's something completely different. But when I'm in that cage, bro, don't touch me, don't talk to me. <laughs> Leave me alone. How did you get mentally and emotionally so strong where it doesn't bother you? Well, you know, it's, you got to look at the reality of the situation. You know, like for me, it's not, you know, you, you kind of got to get over yourself. Like, it's not about you, man. Like, oh, okay, you feel embarrassed. You're not that important. Like, <laughs> get over yourself. Yeah, that's where you go. Get over yourself. Right, like you're worried about how people may perceive you and like you're walking around and it's embarrassing because you shot five air balls. 
get over yourself, right? And then after that, it's okay, well, why did those air balls happen? Got it. High school, year before, we played 35 games, max, right? Week in between, spaced out, plenty of time to rest. In the NBA, it's back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I didn't have the legs. So you look at the shot, every shot was online. Every shot was online, but every shot was short. Right? I got to get stronger. I got to train differently. The weight training program that I'm doing, I got to tailor it for an 82-game season mm -hmm. so that when the playoffs come around, my legs are stronger and that ball gets there. So I look at it with rationale and say, okay, well, the reason why I shot air balls is because my legs aren't there. I go, well, next year they'll be there. That was it. Done. Done. Were there some names that you looked at and says, these three guys are as crazy as I am? I do. I, I, at the time, I deal with what I've referred to as Goat Mountain. I went to Goat Mountain, and I talked to Magic, Michael, Bird, Kim Olajuwon, Jerry West, Oscar Robinson, Bill Russell. You know, so I would talk to them. What did you do? What were your experiences? Michael, in particular, he's become my big brother. He's been my big brother since I first came in the league. And what was that process like? So I went to them and started understanding the ins and outs of the game and you know, how they approach things and their level of detail and obsessiveness. And um, that's what I did. The players that had that passion but weren't willing to commit their entire lives to doing that, right? It's a choice. Right. You have other things, you have family, you have all these other things that you have to do. The game can't really be your number one priority. And so I was just looking at that like, man, I'm, this is going to be fun. If, if I'm buddies with you from high school, if I'm a cousin of yours, what happened to our relationship? How, how did that gravitate when you went into the league and you're, you're determined to become the greatest or you're determined to become one of the greatest? What happens to our relationship? Well, it suffers. It does suffer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because and you they, understood that. You oh, were okay yeah. with that. Oh, yeah. And, and the people that love you, like friends and family, like they know that about you. Got it. So they let you be you. And when you reconvene, you know, you pick back up where you left off. Mm -hmm. But make no mistake about it, everything in between is lost. Right? So those long-term relationships, the commitment of time of, uh, you know, uh, taking vacation. Like I see a lot of players take vacations with other players that are close friends and we'll oh, just take vacations just to take vacations or just hang out just to hang out like I, I, I'm not I never did that why, why, not though? Why, why, why didn't you do that what? well because when I retire I didn't want to have to say I wish I would have done more I don't want that you know I don't want that You know, you got a lot of people playing their hard-earned money to come watch you perform. 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 It's your job to be in shape. It's your job to be strong enough to perform at that level every single night. And as a competitor, I'm not, I'm not ducking shit. Like, it's not, oh, my God, my back hurts. I'm sore. We got to play Vince Carter and Toronto Raptors tonight. We actually had this happen. We had a game against Toronto in 2000. Um, and Vince was tearing the league up. Um, my back was jacked, jacked. But like the perception of that, like what? Kobe's missing the game against Toronto and Vince Carter because man, my back was really spasming. But people will be like, what? Oh, he's ducking Vince. Excuse me? <laughs> no, I don't think so. So I would be in the layup line like, okay, there's a lot of days where, you know, you can rest and recover. Today ain't one of them. Your back can bother you any other day that shit ain't bothering me today. Wow. We going he gonna have to see oh, me man. today. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're looking at a big investments you gotta make, what is the decision making process there? Do you call? Is there first you do your own research? You take this much time. You call an advisor. Is there a, is there a system? You no, follow? it's pretty pretty simple for me. It's it's. Do you understand the business? Is it a business that you can help in some form or fashion? What are the barriers of entry to that business? And then the entrepreneurs themselves, the company that itself, right? Do they have a culture that you believe is sustainable? Are these leaders people that you believe in? 
Are they people that are obsessives? And in turn, have they created a culture of obsessiveness? So I tend to look at those four factors and that's it. That's, that's big right there, by the way. I don't know if you guys caught that right there. That's pretty massive right there. Um, same determination. What's your current work schedule look like today? It's, it's, uh, it's different because I personally am not writing every word of the novels. I am not animating the films. What I have to do now is make sure that the people that we bring in, these obsessives that we bring in, are challenging themselves to do the best job that they think they can do. That's what I'm there for, is for them to constantly look in the mirror and self-assess and challenge themselves. If we have a project and you're saying, okay, I can do that, that's not the project we want. The projects that say, I don't know if I can animate that. I don't know how to write that story. I don't know how to do that. Those are the things we want because through that curiosity, you'll reach a level that you didn't think was possible. And so running the studio, that's what I'm doing. You're playing against the Golden State Warriors. Score is 107-109. You guys are close to getting into the playoffs. You know exactly what happens in the game. You go up, you're about to take your shot, and then all of a sudden, boom, yeah. Achilles happens, right? He went and hit the free throws, and then you walked off the stage. Yeah. You got the surgery guy. When I, I went in the trainer's room, my kids are in there. And, you know, they're looking at you and stuff, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, you know, it's all right, Dad's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. As a parent, you got to set the example. You got to set the example. This, this is another obstacle. This obstacle cannot define me. It's not going to cripple me. It's not going to be responsible for me stepping away for the game that I love. I'm going to step away on my own terms. And that's when the decision was made that, you know what, I'm doing it. Doing it. You're a freaking beast, bro. Hey, hey. Don't tell me you want it. Show me you want it. Are you willing to put in that time? Are you willing to study film? Are you willing to run those sprints all the way through, not halfway? You see, the game of football was created in the realm of gladiators. It was an arena of barbaric people chanting for the warrior who kills the most. You see, football comes from the same bloodline of gladiators. And when you step into that arena, Oh, it takes a special man to step into that arena. Because when you step into that arena, you don't know if you're going to walk out. You don't know if you will live after these 60 minutes. But that's what makes you special. That's what separates you from the normal, from the mediocre. Young King, you gotta display something that you already know you have in you. And that's the will to win. That's the will to be unselfish. Because football takes a certain mentality to play it. There's no better feeling in the world than smelling those hot dogs and hearing that band on Friday night. There's no feeling better in the world than walking out on Saturday with all your friends and family watching. See, what you do all off-season is 
what your season will be. And once you understand that king is game, it's not for nice people. Some play the game to just see the crowd. And others play it to make their bloodline proud. To take mama out the projects and put sister in college. To dress their mother up and give her the world. To one day stand outside of a beautiful home and say this belongs to you, mama. I ran those sprints, I ran those hills, I broke my arm for you, mama. I kept running when I was bleeding for you, mama. See, mama, this game, yes, it's dangerous, but it teaches us how to be a man. It teaches us responsibility. It teaches us to go to class because without it, we can't do what we love. And that's play the game of football. Believe that you have enough. Take all that pain that you felt your entire life and right now I'm talking to one of you seniors. Before you step on that field, take yourself back to that dark place. That place where you had no hope. And I want you to remember how far you came. And when you step on that field, Saturday or Friday night, You look your teammates in the eyes and you tell them, we didn't come this far to only come this far. Royalty.